Hello everyone. Welcome to financial management webinar for December 23. And this is our game changer webinar for financial management. I hope you all are doing well. Uh, let's now begin with the webinar and let's proceed to see what First of all, uh, how to remain connected with me uh, during the webinar and after the webinar. So that's a very simple rule. Uh, this is my number. Those who are new to financial management uh, course at WIFI, who are not part of the paid groups or who are not part of our general WhatsApp groups. So all of you, whether you are part of the paid groups, or you are not and the general students if you want to be part of our free groups uh, of wifi free whatsapp groups of wifi where there are so many students uh, and you have a global community there to discuss fm things so please just whatsapp me at this number and i will definitely uh, add you in that group in those general groups uh, so that you become updated of all the relevant free stuff that I will be sharing in that group. And I do remain active, especially uh, in the before the last day, before the exam days. So, so it will benefit you. Now, uh, how to remain connected uh, with me during the webinar. So that's the same chat box where you just gave me the confirmation. Uh, this is where you will be connecting with me and whatever questions and things I'm going to ask you, you will reply me <coughs> through this chat box. Okay. My name is Rizwan Mania. I am into this teaching field since more than 15 years, in fact now 16 years. My area of expertise includes performance management, financial management and advanced performance management. And I have taught more than 6,000 students, both locally and internationally. I have also conducted uh, the webinars for ACCA uh, Pakistan under the brand name of P2P. And nine ACCA webinars I've conducted for uh, performance management <laughs> and six for advanced performance management. And uh, every time from WIFI's platform, we do conduct webinars for PM, FM, and APM, and for all the other papers as well. So <clears throat> that's clear. Now, the paper structure, section wise, uh, a basic recap. I am very much sure that students already know about this, but just to uh, give you the importance and discuss few things like your section a of the paper uh, will include 15 objective test questions you know each <coughs> worth two marks so that makes 30 marks of your paper section b includes three uh, case style questions three case study based questions uh, you know this is known as mtq where there is a scenario followed by five ot's <clears throat> and each uh, MTQ words 10 marks so that there are three that makes 30 marks. So section A and section B of the paper, if you add these two, uh, end up at 60 marks and these includes your uh, OT based questions. There are seven types of OTs that are tested in the paper, uh, including multiple choice question, multiple response, fill in the blank drag and drop drop down hot area question and hot spot questions <clears throat> then there is section c uh, in your paper <clears throat> this includes two constructive response questions where you definitely need good skills of word <clears throat> and good skills <clears throat> in relation to spreadsheet as well uh, spreadsheet is very key uh, as far as financial management paper is concerned because you have to solve questions uh, in relation to investment appraisal, maybe weighted average cost of capital and the functionality uh, that you can use that you should use in the paper will definitely matter in the examination. Uh, and there are very smart ways of doing the calculations as well. All these will be discussed with you in these two days of webinars. 
<coughs> your exam comprises of three hours uh, and it includes 100 marks which means uh, you are required to solve uh, <coughs> 100 marks in 180 minutes so this gives you a simple criteria of 1.8 minutes you have per mark to solve the reason why i am mentioning this is purely because of <clears throat> the importance to understand time management time management <clears throat> plays a very 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 crucial role uh, from your examination point of view so you have to really make sure that you are good enough in terms of time management and you should not leave the paper and i will be focusing on these things in webinar as well <clears throat> The key areas of the syllabus <coughs> includes investment appraisal. Uh, I can say this very comfortably that this is must test area of your examination. Okay. Followed by business finance, which includes component of weighted average cost of capital, uh, business valuation, working capital, and risk management. Now, <coughs> everything can come in your, pa in your paper. <clears throat> in section a of the paper section b and section c except for two topics <clears throat> one is business valuation and second is risk management these are the two things that uh, definitely uh, will not be coming in section c the rest all uh, can come in section uh, c as well so except for valuation and risk management all other things can come in section c which means you mentally have to prepare yourself that business valuation uh, and risk management is one area that is very highly likely to be tested in uh, your examination for section b uh, and uh, yeah investment appraisal as i said already is very much you know uh, uh, important in terms of section c of your paper okay so uh, that's it now moving towards the webinars day wise plan so today we will be focusing on uh, section c of the examination and uh, if we have time we'll focus on section b as well so important areas that we'll focus on which are most likely to be tested in examination is investment appraisal that we'll be targeting first uh, let me tell you the first two days that are mentioned here are part of the game changer free webinars uh, that we always conduct but when it comes to the third day that is known as day three of your uh, uh, webinar that is part of your grand revision uh, in fact that is grand revision this is which is paid which is part of the paid batch and which batch i'm talking about so this is part of the revision batch now what is a revision batch revision batch basically uh, includes three important things <clears throat> so those who still want to enroll in the revision batch who are not already part of the revision batch uh, for them this batch will help you uh, to pass the paper how number one it will include important areas uh, or pre-recorded content of important areas and uh, that is very important and when i say important areas of pre-recorded content so uh, definitely these are the most highly likely for december 23 attempt not only the uh, concept based recordings are part of this but also it includes questions as well <clears throat> second it includes uh, two mocks <clears throat> now first is uh, a live mock that will be held uh, part of this batch and at the end of this week that is saturday I think which is 24 or 25 uh, <clears throat> and uh, there will be two mocks one is the live mock that will be held uh, and uh, uh, which also includes a live debrief so I'll conduct a debrief session as well for this one first mock that will be a live debrief where I will solve the entire paper and not only this we will even mark your one mock completely there is also a complimentary mock part of this package which will be given to you after the first live debrief will be held that you can further use as a source of practice and you will be given with a recorded debrief of that as well 
So that's feature number two <coughs> of this revision batch. And the third is already I've announced it's the grand revision <coughs> that is part of this revision batch. So those students who want to be part of the revision batch and wants to take advantage of mocks, which is very important, it should be marked by someone and <coughs> want to uh, brush up the uh, understanding in relation to the important areas for December 23 along with its practice of important questions uh, and those who want to be part of the grand revision so can enroll in our revision batch by contacting our support team at this number which is 923249221387 now this is the number you can actually contact at and through this number you can definitely uh, contact the support team and get the details of the revision batch. So let's begin. Uh, <clears throat> Aroshi, grand revision will include uh, the recap of almost all the topics uh, that are part of FM. Uh, so yeah, it will include almost all the topics of FM, right? Uh, but that, uh, other than that, pre-recorded content, detailed content will also be available uh, in this batch okay now one thing that i really focus a lot uh, now uh, is the smart paper solving technique and i really focus on this technique uh, why because i always believe in uh, smart paper solving uh, i know one approach of uh, solving the paper is that you uh, take extra pressure on yourself, take extra burden on yourself. Yes, preparation is important. Yes, uh, you need to prepare yourself well. But what I personally believe is that if you smartly work, if you just keep this in your mind that, okay, the paper, the examination is of 100 marks and first target that I have to achieve is that I have to grab 50 marks first. So my first target is to grab first 50 marks and you have to learn how to grab those first 50 marks by finding easier marks available in the paper yes there are easy marks available or uh, uh, in in all section a b and c uh, and you can use certain different techniques to actually come up to those uh, uh, areas uh, of easy marks and i will definitely tell you uh, certain techniques in these two days of webinar so there are different areas to grab here. For example, uh, in OTs, we can filter out the statements, the irrelevant ones. I'll show you how this needs to be done uh, if you are able to manage this. So we automatically uh, just uh, come to the exact answer. That should be the answer. For CRQs, when it is calculation-based CRQs, uh, you can grab uh, easy marks by solving uh, easy calculations first. And there are easy calculations. And I'll tell you, how ha you have to determine uh, what is easy for you in the paper for crqs theory based again uh, your answer your drafting automatically becomes easier if you are able to determine uh, the examinable verbs uh, and the objects that are part of the uh, uh, requirement which means there are different verbs you know assess briefly describe discuss uh, these are different verbs so you should exactly know the meaning of these verbs. When I say meaning of these verbs, I <coughs> specifically uh, want to highlight this, that different verbs do have different meanings, like uh, compare is different to uh, illustrate, and illustrate is different to explain, and explain is different to discuss, and different discuss is different to state. So every verb has its own meaning not only the meaning uh, of that verb give you the clarity as to what needs to be done but also it gives you idea in how much detail you have to actually go into so it also gives you the details of that and exactly what needs to be done okay yeah further <clears throat> to give yourself the clarity in relation to two areas in relation to the examinable verb so you will watch my video on wifi's official youtube channel uh, where uh, there is a video by the name of examinable verbs examinable verbs do watch that video if you haven't 
because that video will help you to exactly understand the meanings of different verbs uh, which not only will help you in FM in fact all other papers as well secondly you also have to watch another very important video which is available again on Wifi's YouTube channel uh, and that is smart paper solving technique uh, this is also very useful and you definitely should watch this video as well as this will also help you in order to further understand how to grab easy marks in section a b and c overall plan is given in this video but to practically demonstrate that how we will be doing that you uh, will have to watch these two days of webinars these two days of webinars will help you a lot in understanding that particular area but in order to understand overall general plan must watch this video okay right now today's topic includes very important area one of the hot favorite areas of examination that is npv net present value uh, then we'll discuss about payback we'll discuss about arr uh, and then uh, if the time permits we will also be moving towards cost of capital discussion as well so let's not waste our time further and let's begin with our first area of investment appraisal let me tell you one thing the scope of this webinar is not to revise only the conceptual areas or the technical areas of the paper it will also include uh, the past paper practice so my focus more is towards practice solving more questions so it's less of conceptual based thing and more it is of practice okay Starting with the first technique of investment appraisal, this is known as a profit-based technique and this is the only, only profit-based technique that is part of uh, uh, the investment appraisal techniques because the rest three are cash-based techniques which includes payback period, which includes NPV and includes IRR. So, accounting rate of return uh, is... Uh, a profit based technique and being profit based definitely uh, your focus your calculations uh, will be profit based you need to come up to the profits in order to come up to ARR so there are two uh, ways to work out ARR there are two method two different formulas given here uh, it is very clear in paper to uh, decide which formula to use because you don't have to guess that uh, the examiner mentions that by mentioning that work out ARR using initial uh, investment method or calculate ARR by uh, average investment method. So whatever uh, is the case, you will work out ARR accordingly. When it comes to average investment uh, method, if that is the choice, so you should know that we need to work out average investment and the most important thing I just want to bring in front of you or want you to recap is this in this initial capital we add scrap value we don't deduct that's an important thing okay now focusing on the advantages of ARR yes uh, students who are already part of my online classes in big numbers they know that uh, the way I make it simplified through the use of mnemonics so that you are able to retain that so according to this there is a very simple to learn mnemonic in order to uh, recap this or learn this uh, and i'll just uh, demonstrate here as well so first it is very simple and that is it is based on uh, the accounting information uh, so that's a positive point number two it is profitability based measure which is normally preferred by uh, non-finance professionals okay non-finance professionals do like profit based measures third uh, because it is very simple so it creates a lot of ease in order to calculate it and any non-finance professional can even work out ARR because once you have calculated ARR uh, the decision to take according to ARR is a very simple decision rule and that decision rule is you compare ARR with the target rate so if the ARR is greater than the target rate, if it is more than the target rate, uh, if, if it's more than the target rate, definitely my friends, uh, you should accept the project uh, because ARR is greater than the target uh, uh, rate that you have. 
For that, it's very important that you do recall what ARR actually represents, where ARR actually represents the, the percentage profit return expected uh, by the investment, then how much return the investment will provide to the uh, business owners in terms of profit. So it's the percentage return on uh, investment in terms of profit that is indicated by ARR. So how to recall this, uh, how to retain this in your mind? So it's very simple, A for accounting, P for profitability, and E for easy, and the mnemonic is easy to remember, APE. And this is how I teach every time. This is how I make theory easy for the students. So that is APE is what you have to remember. Coming towards the disadvantages, uh, again, it does include uh, sorry, it does ignores time value of money. Obviously, it doesn't discount the cash flow. Uh, plus, it also ignores cash flows from investment because it's a purely profit-based technique. Uh, third is very obvious one that it provides you a percentage-based return. It doesn't give you absolute uh, answer as to by how much amount the project uh, is increasing the wealth for the shareholders like NPV does okay so it, it doesn't provide you absolute gain uh, because it's a percentage based uh, method and definitely uh, because it is based on profits because profits are subject to different accounting policies because accounting policies will differ company to company which means the results based on ARR will show a uh, variation definitely uh, between uh, company to company. So yeah, variation in result is expected because it is based on accounting information. So considering these four points, it's very easy to remember and a very uh, ex uh, simple mnemonic, uh, which is T, V, A, C. Now T for time, V for variation, A for absolute and C for cash. Okay, so the mnemonic is T, V, A, C. So I hope my friends you are enjoying this so far. Uh, yes or no, please share your feedbacks. This is all about ARR. Moving towards the next technique uh, of investment appraisal and that is known as payback period. Payback is the first technique that we are discussing today which is a cash based technique. Cash based technique and what does payback actually indicates. So payback indicates the amount of time uh, the investment will take to achieve to its break even, which means uh, how much time uh, uh, the, the project will take to achieve or break even or uh, net of its investment done. So actually it represents the break even time period uh, as far as the project is concerned and this is purely a cash based technique. You can even discount payback uh, period and that is known as discounted payback where we take cash flows as a discounted cash flows as well. So it is something you work out without discounted cash flows known as simple payback and when you discount those it is known as discounted payback. Okay. So I hope this is clear to all of you so far. Now we can work out payback period uh, using two uh, different formulas when the cash flows are even uh, in, in a given scenario, which means uh, cash flows are even uh, and there is no variation as far as cash inflows are concerned uh, over the period of the project. So we take this formula of cost of the project divided by cash flow per period. Uh, and that's a simple one. And if cash flows are uneven uh, for some reason, so uh, you then use approach uh, a cumulative approach where you uh, actually check after every inflow what is the remaining amount left in order to break even okay now what advantages does payback provides uh, to the decision maker so payback definitely indicates you the uh, time to break even uh, which i already mentioned uh, now because of this you can actually measure the uh, inherent risk in the project. Now, what kind of inherent risk are we talking about? It's very simple. Uh, any project that uh, promises to sh provide a break-even 
later on uh, by uh, which means uh, the break even the break even time period is uh, more uh, compared to a project which will give you earlier break even which means one project is 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 showing you a break even period of two years and one is showing you break even period of five years so obviously as a decision maker uh, you would prefer the one that is showing you an earlier break even uh, because the one that has a uh, break even coming later stage may be considered more risky uh, because that's recoverability of the investment that we are talking about so it does helps in identifying the inherent risk in terms of looking at its recoverability and because of this you are in a good position to rank the project as well ranking can be done uh, as i said i will go with the project that is showing me an earlier break even uh, and the third one is very simple simple to calculate uh, and uh, understand so here i have a mnemonic for you and this mnemonic is a very common one that you are using today uh, in my chat box as well that is sir right so guys are you okay with this what is your answer so the answer is yes sir right where s is simple i is inherent and r is ranking okay <clears throat> coming towards drawbacks uh, for a simple payback where you don't discount the cash flows uh you don't discount the cash flows so the problem with that simple payback is it does not take into account time value of money so that's a problem obviously uh, that's a drawback obviously because it does not consider time value of money but if it is a discounted payback where you do discount cash flows automatically time value of money consideration has been taken into account second uh it does not takes into account uh the cash flows that occur after the payback period is reached after the payback period which which means once you are done with the payback period uh once you are done with the payback period it does not take into account the cash flows after that which, which is an important thing for decision maker why because decision makers are interested in finding out that if we are getting a break even at the end of third year so how many further years does the project has actually you know because if project doesn't have uh, years ahead obviously that can create a problem and and it will be a serious threat that it is just covering the investment so this is very important second done third yeah we will agree it ignores profitability because we know it is a cash based technique so three points to remember and a mnemonic for you is tap yeah guys t a p t for time a for account and p for profitability i hope those students who are new here who are taking this webinar of rizwan money a first time uh, who are not part of my batches before they will like these mnemonics to learn as this will make your life easier as i do make my students life easier when they are in my normal batches as well so we are done with this one guys uh, after payback it's now time to come to words daddy of all and this daddy of all is none than the other in net present value now npv is a difference between uh, uh present value of cash inflows and present value of cash outflows okay so if the net answer is positive we accept the project as a general rule uh, if the answer is negative we reject the project as a general rule and if the answer of npv is zero which is basically break even so uh we uh will uh, decide based on whether we have any other good project available providing us positive NPV. We'll, we go with that. Otherwise, we accept this project. Uh, having said that, positive means shareholder wealth will be created as, as the project is covering the cost of capital and it is also generating wealth for the shareholder. Uh, negative, it is not covering cost of capital, so no way should be accepted zero means it is just covering the cost of capital okay now there are some important calculations that one needs to take into account when it comes to npv and that includes the impact of inflation into npv calculations yeah it is important to inflate the cash flows yes it is important to incorporate the impact of inflation in the cash flows and that 
will depend whether it's a specific rate of inflation or it's a general rate of inflation. And my students do know this when there is one rate given to you in the paper, you go with general rates of inflation that is called as generative inflation. Uh, and when you are given with separate rates for different items like separate for selling price, variable cost, fixed cost, this is known as specific rate of inflation. We do remember simple rule of thumb and what is that? If cash flows are real, guys, you remember what is important here? If cash flows are real, so those will be discounted at real cost of capital. If cash flows are nominal, nominal means what, guys? Nominal means with inflation cash flows. With inflation are nominal. So you need to discount those cash flows using nominal cost of capital. Having said that, let's move towards the positives of NPV. Uh, yeah, it does consider time value of money, which is a very good point for NPV uh, because it discounts the cash flows. Second is it provides an absolute answer to the shareholder which means the amount by which guys are you with me the amount by which the npv is showing a positive answer uh, this is the amount basically a one by which the npv is positive and this is the amount uh, through which shareholder wealth will be increased so it provides a absolute answer Having positive NPV is exactly the amount by which shareholder wealth will increase. Third, yeah, it is a cash-based technique. Shareholders do require cash base because cash base are less subject to manipulation. Is it one year base? No, it covers the entire life of the project. So again, it is good to have an idea overall what the project return will be. Uh, with the shareholders so four things to consider and do we have a mnemonic for this yes we do have and that is talc where t is for time value of money where a is for absolute major where l is for life and c is for cash so talc so do remember my mnemonics so far uh, that we have covered guys are you with me yes or no Coming towards the negative aspects of NPV, uh, uh, yeah, it is basically a one there in which there are a lot of assumptions. To be very honest, it does have a lot of assumptions in relation to the timing of the cash flows, in relation to uh, the project life that it will take two years, three years, four years, and this is the amount of selling price or variable cost. A lot of assumption based. Uh, number two. Uh, it is not a very good measure uh, for the motivation of the managers. Why? Because managers are very much inclined and happy with measures that are short term based, which means managers uh, do require measures like ARR, where uh, IR, sorry, managers do like measures like ROCE, return on capital employee, uh, or ROCE or ROIs. In, through which their bonuses are dependent on that. So they do prefer measures like ROI uh, or ROCE that can provide them bonuses uh, at the end of any single year. Not very happy with uh, NPV because it considers the entire project live. It's a long term uh, method actually. Okay. So ROS ROI is what they prefer to be short term. Uh, <clears throat> Third, difficult to calculate, understand in complex situations. Uh, so there could be a possibility of that as well. And you have to remember this by a mnemonic that is known as MAD. M for motivation, A for assumption, and D for difficult. Is that okay with you, everyone? Clear? So having uh, seen NPV, payback, and uh, ARR, there are certain mnemonics that can be in your mind now. If I quickly recap those, so for ARR, uh, the two advantage and drawback mnemonic includes A for advantages, TVAC for drawback. When it comes to payback, so the advantages uh, mnemonic is SIR, SIR, and drawback includes TAP. And for NPV, 
uh, it's very simple and that is uh, telc and man okay done now <clears throat> situation in case of uh, risk and uncertainty where investment appraisal uh, definitely uh, is is something that relates to uh, risk and uncertainty where investment appraisal uh, or taking decisions about the future does uh, uh, need to take into consideration the element of risk and uncertainty now what is risk risky situation is the one in which you are uh, uh, given with the probabilities of hat of something happening right so if you are given with the probabilities it's a risky situation in case of a risky situation uh, we do need to consider that when we are dealing with NPVs, when we are calculating net present values. So it's important to consider the impact of that. Second uh, situation is an uncertain situation. Uh, uncertain situation is the one in which you are not given with any sort of uh, probabilities, where you don't have probabilities, and that is situation where uh, uh, uncertainty does arise. So if as a decision maker and definitely as a decision maker you are taking decisions in relation to future and when i say future there is definite strong element of risk that you are facing and uncertainty as you are facing so in that case uh, you need to have certain techniques in your mind like sensitivity analysis uh, is one way to deal with uh, this case uh, but it does have its own positive and negative. The second is probability analysis is also another uh, uh, method in order to understand the probabilities of certain things happening and not happening. And also it uses a very common method known as expected value EV. And we do uh, work out these EVs for investment appraisal situations so expected value is the other technique that is used uh, uh, in order to deal with that and this is known as probability analysis as well third is simulation which considers uh, multiple variable changes at one time it considers multiple variable changes at one time and this uh, can be done uh, in your calculation by creating uh, computer models in order to uh, look at what going to happen if x x2 x3 x4 may be variable change at one time so risk and uncertainty consideration is also important in investment appraisal now moving towards the first past paper for this webinar before we start there are certain tips that i want you to give throughout the webinar for different type of questions so for section c there are certain dedicated tips that you have to remember for today and what is that let's look at the tips Candidates do not understand question requirements. Uh, yeah, this is a very common thing and that normally pertains to uh, theory-based questions. So whenever there are theory-based questions, then this is a problem that they do not understand the question requirements very, very easily. And for that, I have to come up with some solution. I will suggest a solution in the webinar, uh, in these webinars where I will uh, give you the idea how to actually deal with the theoretical uh, uh, CRQs. Now, candidates do not understand question requirements, so I'll get you uh, give you the idea about that. Uh, second, candidates are struggling to use spreadsheets to optimum. Struggling to use spreadsheets to optimum. Uh, this is also very important. Uh, I will give my best to give you the idea as to how to use spreadsheet in the best possible way candidates do not relate answers with scenarios that again uh, is an area of narrative side where uh, you need to understand how and if required need to link with the scenario yeah this is important focus on gaining easy marks focus on gaining easy numbers this is very important for all of you to figure it out and we'll try our best to definitely uh, give a thought to it and how to grab easy marks last thing is very important that candidates answer what they thought they were being asked and your thought and their examiner thought definitely varies a lot so you have to answer what they have asked you to answer rather than what you want to answer okay 
So these are the few tips that I have shared with you people. It's now time to move towards the uh, towards the first past paper and let's begin. Here we are. U company is a large company which is listed on major stock market. The company has been evaluating an investment proposal to manufacture product K3J. Okay. The initial investment of 1.8 million will be payable at the start of the first year of operation. So all my friends should know this and I've always emphasized on this a lot as well that it is very important for you to figure it out that when the investment will be paid at the start of the first year of operation, the following draft evaluation has been prepared by a junior employee. So we can see a draft evaluation already available. And uh, if you just quickly look at the requirement here, which is a very interesting one, not very common in the paper as well, and that is prepare a revised draft evaluation of investment appraisal. Prepare a revised draft evaluation. So this means there is something already available and what you have to do is you have to revise it. And you have to comment on its financial acceptability for 11 marks. So first of all, to make things a bit easy for all the students who are new with me is that in this question, see, it is important to determine at a very basic level how many verbs there are. So there are two verbs. One is prepare. This is verb number one to prepare. And this is verb number two, comment. Okay. There are two verbs. Now there are two verbs because this and clearly gives you the idea that there are two things to be answered. This and gives you the idea about the additional requirement that one needs to take into account. So there are two verbs. Now followed by verbs are the objects. Okay. Objects or we can even call them as elements. So when someone says pick pick something. Now, pick is the verb, but what to pick? Whether I have to pick the cell phone, I have to pick the camera, I have to pick someone from some place, I have to pick a car. So until and unless you don't know where to apply that verb, you will be in the area of uncertainty in relation to that. So, where to apply that verb? The question is where to apply that verb is known as object. Is known as object or element as well. So, it says prepare revised draft evaluation. So, the object or the element is revised draft evaluation and rest of the So, where you have to apply this verb is on the object. And it is also very important, my friends, to determine the object or we can even call this, that as an element. Okay. Similarly, for the next verb, what to do? Comment on what? Comment on what? Comment on financial acceptability. And this is also known as your object slash element. Okay. Object slash element. This is your financial acceptability. Okay. So there are two verbs prepare. What to prepare? Revised draft evaluation. Then comment on what to comment? Financial acceptability. So two verbs, two object, objects. In your examination, you always have to consider the marks and the marks always split between the objects. Equality in case of split is not 
compulsory but there will definitely be marks assigned to every particular object mentioned this will be more relevant when we come to the theoretical the narrative side of of this question but right now let's go above again this means this is an evaluation that already available in a draft form and this evaluation definitely is an evaluation which one needs to take into account so uh, <clears throat> let's look at the evaluation sales units are given to you on yearly basis selling price is also given to you 25 25 26 27 variable cost is given to you the above selling prices and variable cost per unit have not been inflated now this is an important information which means you are doing an evaluation where you are not inflating the prices okay the above ones are not inflated have not been inflated this is very clearly mentioned that above ones are not inflated ones okay now <clears throat> You are given with sales revenue, you have variable cost, uh, you have a fixed cost here and uh, you have interest payments, you have cash flows, you have tax allowable depreciation, taxable profits, taxation, net cash flows discounted at 12% what they have done and they have worked out a present value and not only this, they have even worked out an NPV. So now your position today is a different position. Today you are not a person who is uh, preparing an NPV calculation from scratch. In fact, you are a person who will now check the NPV calculation and based upon the mistakes that are done, you need to adjust those in your answer. For that, they have given you some information. Let's read what it says. Relevant fixed costs are forecasted to be 150,000 relevant fixed cost. So, what have they used above? They have used above, okay, 155, 155, 155, and it's constant for each year. Okay, sales and production volumes are the same, and no finished goods inventory is held. The corporation tax is 22% per year, and tax liabilities are payable one year in arrears, right? So, we know this. Uh, so, have they insured one year in areas? Yeah, they have. This is the figure that is available and this is the tax. Okay. The company you can claim capital, the company you can claim tax allowable depreciation of 25% per year on a reducing balance basis. Okay. Based on, basis on initial investment, a balancing charge or allowance can be claimed at the end of the fourth year. Right. They expected that selling price inflation will be 4.2 percent per year variable cost inflation will be five percent and fixed costs wow will be three percent so that is one very clear huge clarity is there that fixed cost here is constant and has not been inflated for sure okay right the investment has a scrap value sorry the investment has no scrap value uh, the investment will be partly financed by 1.5 million loan at 10% and the company's cost of capital is 12%. So here you go friends, the things have been mentioned and uh, yeah, this is what they have mentioned here. Now, if you see as per the requirement, the part B actually is somehow related to part a so i'll just read that explain any two revisions you have made to the draft evaluation in part a above uh, which means now if i ask you the verb and the object guys what is what is your answer in this part b what do you think uh, what is the verb so it's very simple to decide explain is the verb are you with me everyone yes or no explain is the verb and what to explain this is the answer that you have to give so we have to explain what is the object what to explain come on someone says explain 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 what you'll say what to explain so the object will tell you what to explain so it says explain two objects you have made 
two revisions that you have made in the draft evaluation in part A above. So uh, two is what you have to explain here. Let's begin uh, because we need to actually figure it out that what changes are to be made in this case. Okay. Now uh, we need to check his calculation. And for that, we'll start with the first one. For that, let's open the spreadsheet as well. Get ready, everyone, with your spreadsheets. Now, the best way to deal with such a question is to look at each uh, item line by line, right? So, if I start first, I'll start first with uh, the first area, and that is of revenue, right? So, here is the revenue uh, because I have to definitely prepare a revised forecast or revised evaluation so part a is what i'm starting first with project life zero one two three four and five now as per the working i'll just quickly first uh, look at the pro forma so we'll start with revenue here second is the variable cost okay third it's fixed cost that's all fine so far uh interest payment interest payment can never come interest payment are not relevant we, we we should know because interest is already part of cost of capital so we don't show interest as a separate cash flow so we won't take interest at all here okay so then i can show my taxable cash flows after that it, it says to take uh, a tax payments yeah tax payments is what we'll be taking after that then there is something mentioned about tax allowable depreciation so yeah that is also something we're going to take tax savings on capital allowances right now after that uh we are required to take anything else i don't think anything further is left so then we'll show investment here we can show if you want to and if there is any scrap which is not the case after that we will have net cash flows we'll have discount factor and present values okay are we through yeah so this is the format let's begin with revenue this will be my working area if i need in case to check things so yeah now starting with the first one uh definitely i want to do revised calculation so i'll do my working of revenue i'll just copy all this from here and uh, one thing yeah i i should write for my own ease is the units at the top if that will be done that's that will be really good so i have units given here as 95000 100,000, 150, and 150,000. So I'll start with year one, 95, 100,000, 150,000, and yeah, done. Now, so start with the revenue calculation. Uh, revenue details are given to us here in the notes, and which says that. Uh, 4.2 percent is the selling price inflation per year now they 
have worked out the revenue but i cannot trust their working i need to check my own working for that uh, i'll apply one formula to make it fast quick for you guys as well you will also learn how to present uh, and quickly do the calculations in case of npv so i hope you like you will like what i'm doing here so guys uh, the amount of selling price is changing every time yeah for the two years it's same and then it's it is changing so 25 25 26 and 27 so what i can do here is i'll start with a selling price of 25 and uh, will simply multiply this with inflation rate i think that's 4.2 percent so 1.042 power one i need to inflate this obviously so power one uh one time i need to inflate this into the number of units ninety five thousand. okay into the number of units ninety five thousand. uh i don't think there is any condition to do calculations of the thousands or complete numbers so uh it it is up to me i can even use thousands or complete workings anyways let's continue with the company workings 25 the selling price 4% is the rate of inflation. We have attached this with the power value, and the answer is 2474750. Is that clear, everyone? So, this is the answer of year one. Now, and this is also matching with the answer that I have here in form of rounded off, right? So, yeah, that's done. Good for year one, but is it same for year two or not? So, let's copy, let's paste this here. And we don't have to do anything else. But just have a look what is the selling price in year 2. So that is again 25. It's same. So just paste here. Now you can see what has happened is this 25 selling price. We have inflated this using 1.042. And we have attached a power value at the top. So this means obviously it has been connected with the power two, which means we have to inflate this 25 twice, twice, okay? You have to inflate this 25 twice and into 100,000 units. So the figure here that is available is wrong one. Now that's the problem. The figure that they have used here is a wrong value and it should be 2714. It's not 2714. Okay. It's 2605, what they have used here. So that's the problem. That is the problem. Okay. And this is a wrong figure. And uh, how they came up to this value, that's the question. So let me tell you how they've done this calculation as well. What they did, they used 25, this, and they multiplied this with 100,000 units, and they have inflated this by 1.042. That's okay, but they didn't inflate this twice. That's the mistake that they've done. They should have been inflated twice. So they just inflated this uh, once. Because it's an year two value, so from today to come to year two, you have to inflate this twice. So, this is what they haven't done yet. Okay, this is what they haven't done yet. So, I hope this is clear to all of you. Uh, yes, this is the mistake they have done. So they just used 1.04 to that setting. You can even check that as well. Okay. Are you with me, everyone? Now, I'll copy this. I'll copy this. We'll paste here and we'll paste here. But, guys, if the selling price was 25 constant, so these figures that I just worked out. For sure are the correct ones. But because here the selling price is 26 and 27. So I have to make the necessary change in my formula. And I will just make this 26. 
the rest all is same. This 26 will be inflated by 1.042 power 3 into units. Now this is completely fine. The value is perfect. And here I'll make a change and we'll make this 27. And this is also correct. Okay. Done. So I told you what they did and what it should have been. They should have added the uh, inflation for the X number of years in every case, which they are not doing in these cases. Okay. So these are the correct figures for variable uh, for uh, 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 revenue. I hope this is clear to all of you. Now let's move towards the variable cost to see uh, what the figures should have been. So there is an inflation rate for variable cost given to us again separately and which is 5% here and a similar approach is what I'll be adopting in this case as well. And I'll even check the answers. So uh, the variable cost, is it constant? No, it is also changing. So for year one, it's 11. So I'll take, yeah, make sure you use a negative sign to ensure that you get a negative answer for variable cost. So minus 11 into 1.05 uh i think it's five percent i just i'll just cross check again later on okay power one into ninety five thousand right so is it five percent yeah is it five percent so it's eleven into one point oh five into power one and into units and here you go the answer of variable cost done so is this the answer that they have also worked out yeah that's perfectly fine which means year one working for this is also correct now if i just copy this to year two and just change the variable cost to include the impact of 12 into this so if i do this 12 this is one three Two, three and what they have done is one two six zero so again the same error most probably part of this I can even check this 12 to be the variable cost 100,000 is the unit and if I multiply 1.05 yeah this is the same mistake they have done here as well same mistake 12 into 100 okay and they just inflated this once by 1.05. That's the same mistake they have done. Okay. So the inflation rate for variable cost is 5%. So they just inflated this once. That's the same problem they did again. That's wrong, friend. Let's copy paste these two here and let's change the variable cost. So it's 12 for year 3 and 13 for year 4. Okay. So for year 3, it's 12. I'll keep the same. For year 4, I'll make this 30. Done. Okay. Happy? Any problems? I hope this is clear to all of you so far. Okay. Done with variable cost as well. Now, Fixed cost. Fixed cost is uh, 150,000 relevant fixed cost. Fine. And I can clearly see that they have kept this constant. And what is the rate of inflation for fixed cost? So the rate of inflation for fixed cost is 3%. Okay, 3%. So if I work out fixed cost here, minus 150,000 into 1.03 power 1 same thing same thing 150000 1.3 power 1 this is 154 500 and this is what they have worked out here and the same mistake that they did that in fact not the same mistake they kept it same for all the years later on they kept it same for all the years later on this is 154, 500 and they kept the same for all the years later on. So, 
that's the issue they did okay this is wrong we need to inflate this and incorporate the impact of all the years so i'll just copy this and we'll paste here now i don't have to make any sort of changes friends that's the magic okay because the way i have constructed the formula the impact of the inflation automatically will be going into the figures good okay these figures are done in fixed cost there was a problem that they inflated this once and then kept all the remaining fixed cost same which is wrong so done with this one let's move towards taxable cash flows i'll apply the sum formula because i have the luxury to do it because i've kept positive as positive negative as negatives here we have the figures control c for copy control v for paste that's totally fine uh, so that's okay i think now after this obviously because my taxable cash flows have changed so my interest payments would definitely uh, sorry not interest payments my tax payments would definitely which will change so negative what is the tax rate to be used here it's 22 percent so this into 0 0.22 okay this into 0 0.22 right done control c control v control v control v and you can see here uh, the answers coming here in front of you and these are very clear definitely so these are your tax payments done clear everyone okay now coming towards investment investment amount i think was uh, 1.8 million here it is and now the only thing left is tax saving on capital allowances what i have to quickly compute here so let's do it they say that uh, the company can claim tax allowable depreciation at 25 percent per year on a reducing balance basis on the initial investment okay <clears throat> 25 percent per year on reducing balance basis on the initial investment so what have they done now they have taken oh no that's totally wrong if you see at the first glimpse it's 450 amount that they have taken and i think what they are doing is they are taking this on a straight line basis if not wrong because for 1800 000 is the investment and if you divide 1800 with four so that comes up to 450 so yeah that's a mistake definitely that's wrong uh it's not the right approach so what is needed to be done we have to use reducing balance basis which means we have to perform a calculation for that here yeah? tax savings okay uh here capital allowance tax saving when should we start the capital allowance first claim so it depends on the cases do you guys remember my students who have covered from the portal they should know that there are three cases and this is how we determine that when the investment is to be made so it will be made at the start of the first year of operation and when this is the case we start our first claim from year one okay from year one so year one two three project life is for four years right four it's 25 percent reducing balance basis so 18 mil uh, 1.8 million into 0.25 that's the first year allowance okay and this is what this is what 450s and then they took 
for each year. Now, this figure multiplied by a magical 0.75 because it's 25. So, I'll take 0.75 to come up to the second year figure quickly. Then again, 0.75 to come up to the third year quickly. And last year, it's balancing charge or balancing allowance. Everybody knows that. So, to calculate this, we uh, have to basically work out the investment left. So, as far as 18, 1.8 million is concerned. First year allowance is 450. Second year allowance is 337,500. Third year allowance is 253,125. Uh, so this is the remaining amount because there is no scrap available. Had there been scrap, had there been scrap, I would have uh, deducted the scrap value from here as well. But because I don't have any scrap, so that's my final figure. Now let's apply the tax rates. This into 0.22 for year one, for year two, for year three, and this is for year four. So here we go. Now, guys, are you with me? If you are, it's a case of area. So year one tax saving will be given to you in two. Two will be given to you in three. Three will be given to you in four. Four will be given to five. Okay, true, clear. Happy everyone. Right. Now, what I will be doing is, I'll start with year two. With simply link here, this with year two, this with year three, this with year four, and this with year five. Done. I think it's good to move now. Net cash flows. So, this is the taxable cash flow. I can apply some formula here. Taxable cash flow minus tax payments add tax savings. Done. Control C, Control V. Okay, now have we converted all the cash flows into nominal ones by incorporating inflation? The answer is yes, we have. So what discount rate should we use here and what they did use here? They did use 12% but their, the method of inflating was wrong for them uh, and uh, This is 12 given to us. So, this is what we have to use here as well. Uh, assuming this to be definitely nominal cost of capital. So, yeah, that's it. Let's work out the discount factor. 1 divided by 1 plus the cost of capital makes 1.12 to the power here 0. Because for year 0, the discount factor is how much, guys? It's 1, right? Then control C, control V. And here I have all the discount factors based on the years. So you can see here, these are the discount factors I have. And a quick look if you want to. So you can see here, year 2. Okay. Now, after this, we will multiply this with the cash flows, control C, control V. And after this, we are all set to work out NPV is equals to some formula. Let's net off all these together. So the answer is 2508550. This is a positive answer, 
okay this is a positive answer uh, i would like to see what answer they were getting they were also getting a positive 738 answer but this is 25508550 and that's the npv answer for you are we done clear to make this look more better for you guys so i can add a table by going into cell to borders it's better looks more smart to make sure that you round off all the things in the right way so you can see this magical option if towards i'm going and this is the option you can select on your platform one two three four five six seven eight nine ten select the tenth option and see the results yourself right for these uh, i would prefer them to be rounded off maybe two decimals three is okay from exam point of view we also take three and uh, that's it tenth option okay guys so this is the final answer of npv with a proper format as well i'm sure you will like this so guys so far so good so there were problems in inflation that we saw when it comes to selling price when it comes to variable cost even when it comes to fixed cost we saw some problems of inflation definitely and uh, this is what they have done wrong secondly we saw a problem of interest amount that should not be taken uh, so that's also a problem third they did took the cost of capital 12 percent correct but because the inflated amounts above were not correct so again that also created the problem uh, so i think we have yeah about capital allowance also that was a problem so we just sorted out all those issues i if i'm not wrong and i hope these are clear to all of you plus if you see uh yeah one more problem i just saw here and that was that they didn't took year five that's strange they didn't took year five for taxation but that's another problem they ignored year five totally so if i sum up interest figure wrong tax calculations to be shown in year 5 wrong capital uh, allowances tax savings wrong and the inflation aspect of all three variable costs selling price and fixed cost was wrongly done done dusted now moving towards the next requirement of this particular question was about explain any two revisions you have made to the draft evaluation part of it. explain now see the requirement is of how many marks the requirement is of two marks right the requirement is for two marks now if the requirement is for two marks so if the requirement is of two marks then yes you need to for theory purpose i'm telling tech uh, i am mentioning here that you look at the verb explain you look at the object two revisions and marks four so an equal split would be how much two marks for one two marks for one so what problems you are interested in mentioning it's up to me whatever i can select so one thing i'll definitely mention is the interest payment issue you can use a good heading for your answer it's always good to use a heading for your answer and second uh, you can even write it directly but it's good to you know add uh, the uh, heading second is tax saving calculation 
Okay. Now, two headings. Look at the verb. Verb is explained, which means you cannot just go like this. You cannot just go like this. You have to explain why revision was important. Now, here the answer is why, 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 why. You can't just mention interest rate change was made. You can't just mention tax saving change was done. The verb is not state. The verb is explain. For explain, why, why, W H Y is what you have to answer. Because you will only get two marks when you explain why you made the change. Okay. So interest payment. Now why we made the made the change? So we'll mention here interest payment even though a relevant cash flow but will not be shown in NPV as direct cash outflow because because now the reason is coming because this is already part of cost of capital that's it why tell the reason tax saving calculation so here i'll mention tax allowable depreciation should have been calculated on the basis of reducing balance basis okay and not on the on, and not on straight line method or straight line basis as done in the question okay so that's it mention the reason as instructed by the question this had to be done that's it two marks two marks for one two marks for two and this is how we deal with theory when it comes to your examination questions i hope this is clear so far here we are done with the first half of the webinar guys are you happy what's your feedback please yes or no going good so far is it to the point so far i'll come to that mustafa okay done the next requirement in the same question and that is another narrative part which says discuss is the examinable verb what to discuss two ways two ways of incorporating risk two ways of incorporating risk into investment appraisal for five marks okay <clears throat> so uh, they are asking us to discuss two ways of incorporating risk into investment appraisal and that's a five marks right now it's very clear because each method each method has a weightage of each method has a weightage of 2.5 marks okay so the first technique that comes to our mind is probability analysis okay so This is the first technique that comes to your mind, probability analysis. Now, the object is two ways. First technique is probability analysis. You have to discuss probability analysis and uh, definitely uh, in mentioning this, you have to 
when you are discussing probability analysis you have to mention what positive if there are any any negatives you can even mention that as well normally we have seen uh, this requirement tested a lot okay so let's mention here probability analysis basically uses okay uses the probabilities okay and uh, it assigns probabilities to outcomes or different variables yes that's correct like variable cost having a probability of a variable cost to be 20 having a probability of this 30 to be having a probability of this okay so this is what we do we assign uh, probabilities to outcome or different variables right we do work out from this we do work out range of npvs and their joint probabilities so we have done all these calculations as well okay joint probabilities also also we can calculate the expected npv yeah expected npv is what we can calculate as well okay so you can work out expected npv as well using expected value concept but for that it is very important for expected value it is very important that event should be repetitive one and probabilities are accurate okay that's very important you can mention are the points related to expected value here as well uh, plus further it helps in what further it uh, indicates the worst and indicates the best possible outcomes and their probabilities as well okay so this is all what one should know plus it also helps in identifying uh, the most and least likely outcomes and their probabilities okay so these are so many things that are associated with probability analysis hence it does incorporates for its risk into investment appraisal now my friends this what all i have written here in form of bullets is what you have to write in form of paragraphs okay you have to write this in form of paragraphs so this should be written in form of paragraphs understood everyone clear okay now the other method the other method that you can mention here is sensitivity analysis sensitivity analysis okay now what does sensitivity do 
so we'll mention it identifies the most most critical variable which if changed can impact the decision okay so this is what sensitivity does we know this about sensitivity uh, and for sensitivity to be useful yeah this is important that it changes one variable at one time only okay uh, and uh, it identifies the impact on the decision that is for any variable that will result in zero npv is the most critical variable okay so any variable having a small change affects the npv and brings that to zero will be the most critical variable okay done but there are certain problems like however it does not considers the probability yes of variable changing now this is important to consider it doesn't consider the probability of variable changes so because of this because of this now this is a very important thing to keep in your mind because of this this technique does not incorporates incorporates risk into investment appraisal very important to mention okay right okay so that's it the other technique you can mention here is uh, risk adjusted vac is also one technique to deal with risk and uncertainty we have seen that but here it is very clearly mentioned that these are the two one and sensitivity is what you have to keep in your mind that it doesn't incorporate risk and investment appraisal so done with this two uh verb two objects actually i would say because there are two techniques in paragraph form you have to write with the headings i hope this is clear to all of you done with this entire part let me quickly tell you the marking scheme of this 11 mark calculation that we did in order to understand where the easy marks were available for the calculation purpose so going back to my spreadsheet i'll just quickly tell you where you have secured easy numbers because if this is an 11 mark requirement one mark for the comment remaining 10 marks what you have to grab through calculations so if i divide 11 by 2 so the half would be 5.5 so how to grab those easy 5.5 marks first now the easy pickings if you see here related to once again the revenue calculation that you have done so that would award you uh, uh two marks in this case okay then variable costs one mark uh fixed cost one mark okay excluding interest you ignored interest so one mark for interest exclusion okay interest right so you can see five marks almost done by these starting calculations now Tax allowable depreciation, 
tax saving on that always has more marks here. So you can say two marks here. One mark for the tax payments. One mark for the tax payment. Two marks for tax allowable depreciation. Now that total takes you to eight if I'm not wrong. And then, yeah, timing of the tax liabilities. So you also get marked for that as well. Uh, so I can just incorporate that here, for example. So two marks, including the timing of uh, taxation that we just incorporated here. Then after that, NPV, net present value that I worked out. So this has one mark. And the comment that I did, uh, that I have to show here, that I didn't, actually showed here had one mark and this comment was simple that the NPV uh, is positive so the project should have been accepted uh, because whenever the NPV is positive uh, it the project is covering the cost of capital and is also generating wealth for the shareholder so the comment would definitely get one mark here so you can see here that uh, this is the marking scheme to be followed and everything is counted when it comes to your marks okay so this is an 11 mark requirement 11 mark breakup is in a in front of you if you grab quicks five marks easily you are into a passing position very quickly so these are easy pickings easy calculations every component has a separate mark that one can focus on so i hope this is clear to all of you as far as this first question is concerned relating to crqs okay done yeah uh, aroshi this is what you can write you can even write risk adjusted vag as a third method as well okay there are four methods simulation sensitivity uh, probability analysis and risk adjusted vag is that clear aroshi now time for section b practice mtq what are the problems of MTQ that we have to precisely look at? Candidates do not read the scenario actively in case of MTQs. My friends, MTQs scenario is given to you. One scenario followed by five OTs. Now, the common problem that examiner has mentioned a lot in section B is that students do not take care of this. That all five are connected with the scenario. Generally speaking, as you start the answer, first OT, you just read the scenario, first OT, you, after that you just read. So you are very much related to the scenario. You are able to relate that easily. Then second, then third. And gradually as you move on, you start forgetting that you have to link with the scenario. So remember section B is not like section A. This doesn't deal with isolated OTs. Scenario has a lot more importance in section B. And why I'm saying this is because that for example, for example, a OT comes where they ask you what are the legitimate ways of uh, what are the legitimate reasons, in fact, for, for uh, capital rationing? Okay, Le legitimate reasons for rationing. So, the legitimate reasons for rationing does include reasons that pertains to hard rationing and soft rationing. Now, can you recall that? Like, bank not willing to give loan. Okay, like... Uh, Management is not interested because management wants to rank the better projects or they want to avoid dilution of control, right? Both are the reasons that are valid. For, ex for hard rationing reasons are also valid. Soft rationing reasons are also valid. But if a scenario in section B states that the management have no issue in raising finance because there is no problem in relation to dilution of 
control or risk of further interest payments so if scenario mentions that and if one of the single ot gives you the same option so in that case considering scenario has mentioned that that will not be an issue so you won't select those as a legitimate reason for rationing even though keeping in mind the isolated impact yeah these are but considering scenario and there is a restriction on that then you won't take it so that is very important you have to basically apply your knowledge of theories technique to the scenario given yes fill in the blanks my friends are doing a lot of uh, things difficult for the students rounding of mistakes everything done is correct but at the end they falter when it comes to rounding off so don't do this mistake second find distractors what are the distractors distractors are like devil they distract you from good things so you need to find out distractors so that you will to filter out those and come to the answer that is the answer that should be the answer done one more thing for crq the timing as per examination is for a 20 mark question to be 36 minutes here for section b you have 18 minutes now few things three mtq questions of 18 minutes each first of all how to ensure you complete one mtq in 18 minutes is that remember not all five ot's in one mtq will be difficult not all five will be difficult yes three could be max difficult two would be moderate to easy so first thing that the way the mtqs are structured is that if you are unable to solve question one of that mtq you can solve question two if you are not able to solve first three you can solve four which means the examiner has explicitly mentioned that i'm not connecting the answers of previous ot's with the next ot's which means anyone who is not able to solve uh, one question two or three you don't have to use the answers of those for the remaining ones that's a good deal and secondly not all five will be related to calculations or not all five will be related to theory there is a chance of both being part of the mtq which means if you are good at some narrative OTs, you can quickly go there, solve those and grab two marks. Because how much do you need in one MTQ out of 10 is six, not five, six, because you get two marks. If you do right, you get complete two marks or you don't get anything. So six marks for six, three should be correct. Now three, you have to target the easy three OTs solve the easy ones maybe narrative would be easier one maybe calculative would be easier one try to solve easy one quickly because if i tell you one thing if each ot weighs two marks considering this you have 3.6 minutes to complete one single ot one single ot 3.6 minutes so certain ot's might take less than 3.6 minutes whereas others would take more than 3.6 minutes so the average should be 3.6 minutes which means the easy ones that you think are very easy and would be done in a minute or one and a half minute solve those first million dollar tips smart paper solving technique solve those first so that you are left with more time for the ones that you feel will require more time and this will allow you to solve one mtq within 18 minutes 
So that's one approach to deal with one single MTQ. Now, as there are three MTQs, here also I'll say start with that MTQ area with that topic which you are good at. Now, if one question comes from business valuation and one comes from uh, what you call uh, risk management and one is from NPV or investment appraisal. So, I would say start with investment appraisal MTQ first because generally people are good at investment appraisal and you if you are able to pick the right topic first. So, instead of 18 minutes, you can solve that complete MTQ in 15 minutes, maybe 13 minutes. So, any time that you save in the MTQ, you can reinvest that time to a difficult topic MTQ then. Generally, people do get in trouble when it comes to business valuation MTQ or risk management. So, in that case, my friends, in that case, you can start with the easy topic, one complete MTQ and then move to the difficult one. So these are smart techniques to follow. It's now time to move towards our second question for today. Here we are. Let's begin. Scenario followed by five OTs. The following information relates to an investment project which is being evaluated by the directors of FENCE, a listed company. Okay? A listed company. The initial investment payable at the start of the first year operation is 3.9 million. Okay, that's fine. You are given with the net operating cash flows. Net operating cash flows, okay? Net operating cash flows are given to you. <clears throat> Scrap value. The directors believe that this investment project will increase shareholder wealth if it achieves a return on capital employed greater than 15%, that is your ROS. That's a bit strange actually. Any roast to be more than 15% will increase shareholder wealth. As a matter of policy, the directors require all investment projects to be evaluated using both payback and return on capital method like ARR. Shareholders have recently criticized the directors for using these investment appraisal methods, claiming that Fensco ought to be using academically preferred NPV. Yeah, you are right. It's daddy of all. The directors have a remuneration package. Money, money, money. Which includes a financial reward for achieving an annual ROS. Return on capital employed greater than 15%. Which means directors, Mr. Directors, your target is to improve ROS then. The remuneration package does not include share option schemes. Mm. Mm. Problems. Let's start. There are five OTs. If I quickly skim to the requirement just to see what, how many are calculative ones or theory. So that's one calculation. Second is also calculation. Third is theory. Fourth is theory. Fifth is theory. Mm. If you want, you can start with theoretical ones first to save your time if you feel those are easy for you. <coughs> so what are they requiring us to do first? They are asking us to work out the payback period of the investment project. Okay, for payback, what is needed? Do we have the cash flows available here? Yeah, we do have. So, what quickly we do, we check whether the cash flows are even or uneven. So, if you see here, the cash flows that are given to me here, 
इंक्लूड्स ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड फिफ्टीन हंड्रेड सिक्सटीन हंड्रेड एंड वन फाइव एट जीरो ओके विच मीन्स गाइज विच मीन्स दैट आई हैव टू अपलोड यूज ए क्यूमुलेटिव अप्रोच सो फॉर दैट वॉट वी डू वेरी क्विकली इट्स नॉट कंपल्सरी टू राइट एनी थिंग यू कैन डू यूजिंग कैलकुलेटर्स थम्स अप कैश फ्लो क्यूमुलेटिव कैश फ्लोज इयर जीरो इन्वेस्टमेंट अमाउंट टू थ्री पॉइंट नाइन मिलियन दैट्स अ नेगेटिव वन दैट्स इन्वेस्टमेंट सो क्यूमुलेटिव विल बी थ्री पॉइंट नाइन मिलियन इन इयर वन वी एक्सपेक्ट टू रिसीव ट्वेल्व हंड्रेड so because of this 1200 i will be left with 2700 to cover okay then in year 2 1500 is what i further gonna get as a cash inflow so if i adjust this with this so i'll be left with 1200 deficit hello guys are you with me sleeping year 3 Sixteen hundred is what I'm going to get as a cash inflow, and this is very clear by comparing sixteen with twelve, which means in year three I'll be able to recover my investment. For payback, what I've mentioned, either you have to give answer in terms of years, or you have to give answer in terms of months, or it could be a combination of year and months. So this is totally years. So this means. Two years for sure, plus uncovered amount. Uncovered amount, twelve hundred will be covered in year three. Cash flow is sixteen hundred, so twelve hundred divided by sixteen hundred. This answer that you will get will be in decimals, and that will be point seven five in years. So if you add. That makes two point seven five years. Two point seven five years. That is a peanut or a walnut for my students. Yes or no? Done. Clear. Easy. Second, based on average investment method, I did told you. I always mention this. They will mention ARR. What is the percentage RO? CE that is ARR on investment project to one decimal place, one decimal place. Okay, so my friends, what are we required to do here? We need to work out ARR. Uh, for that, what quick thing we can do? There is a shortcut that I can apply. I will add all the cash flows together to work out the total operating cash flows. So total cash flows would sum around uh, one, two, three, four, five, eight, eight, zero. Okay. From this, what I'll do? I'll deduct the complete depreciation. Complete depreciation for all the years. So for that depreciation, total depreciation. I will look at the investment amount of three point nine million. From this, I need to deduct a scrap of hundred as well. That's the shortcut you guys should know, right? So total depreciation, entire project depreciation, thirty eight hundred. So the total profit, total profit. Is something I'll work out, and let me tell you, the total profit here is five eight eight zero minus three eight double zero. It's two zero eight zero to be the total profit. Okay. So, do ARR require us to make this or convert this into per year? Average, yes or no? Yeah, it does. Divide by four. So this gives you a total of, oh sorry, per year of five twenty. Five twenty. 
ओके गाइस थ्रू हेलो आई यू विथ मी इज दिस इंटायर वर्किंग क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू ओके नाउ फॉर एवरेज इन्वेस्टमेंट मेथड 520 ट्वेंटी इज द फिगर दैट आई एम गोना टेक एंड वर्क आउट सो इट्स फाइव ट्वेंटी डिवाइड बाय इनिशियल इन्वेस्टमेंट ऑफ थर्टी नाइन हंड्रेड प्लस क्रैप ओके नाउ प्लस क्रैप दिस इज नॉट डेप्रिसिएशन डिवाइड बाय टू सो द आंसर विल बी ट्वेंटी सिक्स परसेंट ट्वेंटी सिक्स इज वॉट यूल राइट परसेंटेज इज ऑलरेडी गिवेन टू यू सो इट्स ट्वेंटी सिक्स दे आस्ट यू टू राउंड आउट टू वन डेस वन प्लेस सो लेट बी एक्जैक्टली फाइंड आउट वॉट द फिगर इज कमिंग हियर फाइव ट्वेंटी डिवाइडेड बाई टू थाउजेंड सो दी फिगर इज एक्जैक्टली पॉइंट टू सिक्स एक्जैक्टली पॉइंट टू सिक्स ओके एंड इफ आई मल्टीप्लाई दिस विद हंड्रेड सो दैट्स एक्जैक्टली ट्वेंटी सिक्स परसेंट uh because it is saying to one decimal place so i'll write this 26.0 26.0 okay i'll write this 26.0 <clears throat> i know the answer is exact 26% so i'll write this 26.0 and this is the answer uh for us in percentage clear okay now coming towards theory okay theory read the requirement carefully read the requirement carefully it says which two two so the answer is two of the following statements about investment appraisal methods are correct so there are two correct figures sorry not figures two correct statements and it is about investment appraisal methods which includes your npvs and irrs and ros and arrs okay let's start with the first one the ros arr method considers time value of money is it a very simple one to filter it out from here certain statements are out of the box certain are the distractors and certain are the answers so there are three categories normally we see out of the box distractors and the answer answer is angel distractor is devil and out of the box i think out of the box are given to help you to get close to distractors and dev uh, angels and find out the angel there so the first one is out of the box nothing to be confused about it doesn't uses discounting at all second ros must be greater than cost of equity if a project is to be accepted it is not correct the rule for ros and the decision making method that one has to use for taking decision using ros or arr i would say is to compare this with hurdle rate target rate targeted which is not based on ke here done so this is also wrong that's i th i don't think this to be confusing once here because we know the rule compare arr with hurdle rate that's okay now do i need to read the remaining two sometimes smart paper solving technique does mentions that you are able to figure out the answers now i don't need to read the next two see i can save my time if i figure out the first two are wrong the next two would definitely be correct because what are they saying to now if i'm sure shot for the first two i'm not sure about the next two the answer is c and d <laughs> the answer is what c and d okay so 
see riskier projects riskier projects should be evaluated with shorter payback periods now is that correct yes if projects are riskier so we can set a shorter payback period requirement for them shorter payback period required requirement for them okay so that we screen the riskier one easily because the shorter the payback period the closer they will be to the current situation the later the payback period the more you have to wait in the future so it's more near to the present present situation okay so we can set a we can set what we can set shorter payback requirement for them so that easily we can screen the one having longer payback periods done last payback period ignores the timing of cash flows within the payback period yeah that's true because always wait for the word discounted payback okay payback period ignores the timing of the cash flow within the payback period yeah timing of the cash flows so we always work out on the basis of year 1 figure is clear year 2 year 3 we ignore the timing of the cash flow we, we do not take into account timing of the cash flow that's true and both are correct so yes payback period ignores timings and c is also correct done with this one let's move on to the next one which of the following statements about fensco is or are correct about fensco okay managerial reward scheme of listed companies should encourage the achievement of stakeholder objectives now looking at fensco it is a listed company first of all stock listed company and what kind of revenue package they have is financial reward if they achieve ros so now guys what do you think listed companies are subject to high scrutiny where you have to consider the achievement of stakeholder objective where you have to avoid the agency problem and what is agency problem directors are not working in the best interest of shareholders and literally speaking if you base rewards on the basis of short term ros short term ros short term ros this clearly means that you have to consider you have to keep the possibility of manipulation will be done by the managers to achieve a certain 15% every time and get the bonus no matter how they achieve 15% they'll try to achieve 15% by doing all sort of manipulation all sort of manipulation to achieve it so that's totally correct it will encourage them to do manipulation so the first statement is correct yes reward scheme should be one that should consider achievement of stakeholder objective especially shareholders especially shareholders and as i said it's a listed company so it is more subject to scrutiny so that's correct good reward system will ensure all these things number 2 requiring investment projects to be evaluated with ros is an example of <laughs> dysfunctional i already explained that in order to achieve 15% they will do anything to do and get 15% and they can even end up doing manipulation and involve themselves into dysfunctional behavior that's totally fine what is dysfunctional giving objectives to your own 
giving priority to your own objectives at the expense of organization. Last, fence company has an agency problem. Ah, as director are not acting to maximize share of wealth and why? It says has an agency problem. This is what I say. MTQs in section B relates to scenario, connect with scenario. So how can I connect this? If I go above, I'll see in this paragraph very clearly that they are awarding themselves bonus on the basis of rows and it's a clear sign of agency issue which means they will focus on the achievement of 15% giving no importance to shareholders because shareholders are interested in the share price and they have nothing to improve share price because they are not focusing on the option like share option scheme where they are they will be granted x number of shares after x years at x price in short motivating them to increase the share price as they will become the shareholders no incentive nothing given which clearly shows there is an agency problem clearly shows an agency problem And that is why you can see the focus of management is using investment appraisal method rows to assess shareholder value creation. They are making shareholders stupid. Like if the rows improves, shareholder wealth is increased. No, it's not the case. It's an indirect measure, not a direct measure. So definitely there is an agency issue. So I. I am very sure, you should be sure that the answer is D. Okay? D. By all means is D. Which of the following statements about fence coach directors remuneration package is correct? Directors remuneration should be determined by senior executive directors. Is that right? The answer is director division should be set by senior executive directors. No, there should be a proper remuneration committee for that for a listed company. And independent non-executive directors should assign the remuneration. And this is done through remuneration committee. That's wrong. Second, introducing share option scheme would help bring objectives in line with shareholder. Definitely, you will be given X number of shares after X year at X price and you give your best to improve the share price. Then automatically they will work to improve the share price. Okay. Third, linking financial rewards to target rows will encourage short term profitability and discourage capital investment. This is truly right. Yes. As I already mentioned, you will try to achieve your yearly targets to get your bonuses and rewards. You would not make new investment because, with the fear that any new investment means your investment, your asset base will increase and your rows would go down and you would do tricky things to show better profits. Wrong. This is the right statement and the answer is C. C. Understood? So the selection obviously should be done by reading all the statements. But sometimes Filtering out the statements well makes your life easier. And sometimes pure smartness and if the question is of that nature, you can come up to the answer without having to read all the statements. But I do encourage the better it is to read all and you are more confident about. I hope this MTQ and the technique that I mentioned is useful here. Uh, in this MTQ, I would say solving a question of calculation 
will take less time because of the basic calculations which you can reinvest on the ones that are theory theoretical ones and that you want to think more before finalizing final answer. So I hope this is clear to all of you. Guys, happy so far with the practice work? Section A, B, yes or no? Now, let's move ahead with topic two after good revision of investment appraisal. The next topic that comes is cost of capital. VAC, part of business finance. And one thing very important for cost of capital, the way I teach my student and my students are a strong evidence of that, that the way I teach, the way I tell them that cost of capital, which is part of business finance, is opposite to business valuation. VAC. VAC is almost the opposite of business valuation. So those of my friends who are good in VAC, they will be good in business valuation because it's the opposite thinking that you have to adopt. Opposite thinking that you have to adopt. So let's start. Remember, weighted average cost of capital, VAC, basically is a method to calculate the cost in relation to the capital that has been obtained by a company using different sources of finance. Now, if you as a company opted for equity, so equity is what you are using and it is treated as your capital. So, is equity free? No. You opted for debt as a source of capital. So, did you got debt for free? No. No, never. So, if you go and obtain these sources from the market, you need to bear a cost. So, for a company who obtains these sources as a finance options, needs to bear the cost of that finance. And that is why the collective cost of all these sources of finance, the collective cost of all these sources of finance is known as weighted average, weighted average cost of capital. So in case of VAC, your consideration, your mindset should always be of a company because all these are treated as a cost for the company. All these are treated as what guys? Cost for the company. So the mindset should be of a company. Now, a cost of capital is a minimum cost that company needs to cover. Company needs to cover. Company needs to pay. So as I said, this cost of capital is a cost for the company. So, company will pay this cost to those who gave them the finance. So, for investors, for investors, it's a return. For company, it's a cost. Wow. For investors, it's a return. For company, it's a cost. Now, let me tell you those who don't know this. And I'm sure students who are not part of my batch, I'm sure they will not know this. That in VAC, the perspective that we take is of a company because it's a cost for the company. But in business valuation, we take the perspective of investor. So that is why any cost that is a cost here would be considered as a return in business valuation. Any cost, listen, this is a million dollar statement. 
any cost which is a cost here will be treated as a return in business valuation. Why, why, why? Because, because in business valuation, the perspective, the perspective that we take is of an investor. So, for investor, what is this? Cost. I pay 2% interest to the investor. So that 2% is a cost for me. But for the person who receiving it, it's an income. It's an income. Understood? So, it's a vice versa thing. Any cost here will be treated as an income in business valuation. Because the perspective in business valuation is of an, an, is of an investor. Investor. So, I hope this is clear. I have seen a lot of questions on social media, pages, groups, where people ask about all these things. What is the difference between R and KD? So, let me tell you the cost of the company, the cost of the company in relation to debt finance. We represent this, that as a KD. Okay. And R is basically an income for the investor in case of debt. So, that is represented as R. And the difference is in that we take investor perspective. Here we take the company's perspective. So, I hope this is clear. Moving forward, what type of Sources company can actually acquire equity. Is it free? No. Equity is a cost. So, we call this as cost of equity. Represented by KE. How many methods do we have to work out KE? There are two methods, friends. One is dividend valuation model. Second, capital asset pricing model, which of the two is a better one. So, it's CAPM better one compared to dividend valuation model. Okay. Reason, reason CAPM considers the market based risk and return relationship. This C, same CAPM is even useful to calculate risk adjusted cost of equity as well because it considers the project, project risk. So, CAPM is better and it considers risk and and all that risk it considers is through beta, beta. Okay. The other source of finance that the company can use is preference shares, preference shares. And we treat these as, if I'm not wrong, in VAC, we treat these as irredeemable preference shares. In VAC calculation, we treat, assume that to be irredeemable preference shares. And we represent those preference shares as KP. In Pakistan, we have KPK, Khaybar Pakhtun Khwa. It's not that, it's KP. Even an England player, old England player, Kevin Peterson. But it's not that, it's cost of preference shares. I hope some student from England will be here and would say, wow, Kevin Peterson, good cricketer, was a good cricketer. Done? So, cost of preference shares. Third source of finance that the company uses is debt. There are so many different debt the company can opt for. Redeemable, irredeemable, convertible, bank loans. So, we represent this as KD as I mentioned earlier, KD in case of debt. So, for irredeemable and convertible, 
to work out KD, the method to follow is IRR. IRR. So, this is what we do in the calculation of VAC. So, let's see what we do in calculating VAC first. We calculate the cost of each source of capital, which means we calculate KE either using DVM or CAPM. It depends on the type of information that is given to you. My Rizwan Mania million dollar strategy to deal with VAC question says that first look at the balance sheet extract or the statement of financial position extract. Why? Because this will tell you the sources of finance because depending on that you will get to know whether you have to work out KE, you have to work out KP, you have to work out KD, 1, 2, all of them. So you work out the cost depending on the sources of finance given in the balance sheet. Are we clear? We should be. Second step, calculate the weights. Now, weights depend on market values or the book values. So, when I say market value of equity, market value of debt is better preferred approach over book values because book values represent historical side book value or historical whereas market value represents 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 uh, current opportunity cost of finance so we work out the values for equity using the formulas for equity ordinary shares its share price into number of shares for preference its share price into number of shares for debt, it's total nominal value divided by 100 into market value, if 100 is the nominal value. Once done with the cost, we multiply cost with the weights, multiply cost with the weights, and we add all and divide that with the uh, total capital employed to come up to VAC. Okay, to come up to VAC. Right? So, this is how the calculation of VAC is done, and VAC represents the minimum uh, rate of return for the investors, which is treated as a cost for the company. I hope the revision of VAC is clear to you. So, today we are done with the revision of investment appraisal and the cost of capital, guys. Now it's time for the QA before I end. So please, you can start with the questions if you have any. And I hope this was useful for you so far today. Yes or no? It's available in your explanation of uh, the paper. Uh, yes, if all those options are available on your spreadsheets, which they are, then you can. Okay, now guys, share your feedbacks in relation to today's session, how it was, did you enjoy the session today or not, was it useful from the practice point of view, from the techniques point of view, from the revision point of view. So, how do you think the first day went for you all? Satisfied, happy? Yes, please. Need your feedbacks? Do share your feedbacks in the comment section, please. Okay, great. Thanks for your feedback. So, we'll be, uh, yeah, the recordings of these will be available on Wifi's official YouTube channel. Okay, after one day, tomorrow, be with me in the session. Make sure you are with me in the tomorrow session as well. And don't miss out on this opportunity as well. So, see you tomorrow uh, with other topics and more practice area. Until then, take care and have a nice day. See you then tomorrow. Bye.